Gambia is a small country on the west coast of Africa. It is by nature a peaceful, gentle country. It is known by most of us for its white sandy beaches and the generous hospitality of its tourist trade. But behind the scenes in the inland regions, far away from the coast, the story is very different. These delightful but more traditional people have been forgotten and left behind in the rush to development. Until recent years, people in these remote areas lived contentedly in their small villages, existing by subsistence farming. Their relationship with their extended families, their communities, their environment and their culture was highly developed. Life was very basic, but potentially adequate. But this is now being undermined, not by war, terrorism, pollution or inflation. Happily none of those things have reached them yet, but because of the introduction of tourism and technology which is luring all the young men, who are the lifeblood of the community, away from the rural villages in a desire for the bright lights of the cities and the West. Those who cannot get work, and this is the vast majority, may turn to harassing holiday makers or prostitute themselves trying to get visas. So desperate have they become to leave the poverty of this little African country that they have now even started building boats on the beaches to try to get out. You see the lucky ones on the news broadcasts washed up in the Mediterranean. They have a 50-50 chance of survival and the price of a place in the boat will take their whole family's income for years. When, and if they arrive, they will more often than not be caught and sent back. Many of those that do make it to Europe turn to crime or selling drugs to survive. This mass exodus of the young men from the villages to the coastal resorts, the rural urban drift they call it, is an inadvertent side effect of the current development of the tourist trade and is causing ever worsening hardship and poverty to the women, children and old people left at home trying to run their family farms. This is now leading to widespread malnutrition. When that happens, we only have to provide the tools for us, plus the fencing, as you have just said. You see what will happen. You see, we don't have to buy lands and the like. We have our own lands, which are left by our great-grandfathers. They are still there, very large. When you happen to provide those for us, you will not regret it. Sandy started helping some of the young men in a remote village of the Lower River Division of the Gambia about five years ago. They wanted to stay in their village, but felt pressurised to leave in search of something better. They had little chance of earning money where they were, and they told her that even if they had money, there was no food to buy because no one could grow much owing to the lack of water. Sandy had run an organic, self-reliant smallholding for many years in the UK, and although everything was very different here, permaculture policies apply more or less in any climate and in any condition she decided to work out a fully sustainable system that would be sophisticated enough to attract these strong, dignified young men to stay at home in their village and grow food for themselves and their community all the year round as their livelihood. The young men, together with a group of dedicated Gambian volunteers and her, have worked out a systematic plan to set up and run home farms on their own land in their own village. It's taken them a few years and they've used the experience of both cultures through their own trial and error and they've also had the help of many government agencies and other NGOs. Sandy provided the eight basic elements which are 1. A well 2. A pump 3. Tanks 4. Tools 5. Fencing 6. A store 7. Transport 8. Training they provided the labour, the enthusiasm, the dedication and the hope. Over the years the plan has evolved as they have experimented with different crops and species, rotation systems and appropriate pumps, but basically it is a system which enables them to produce a continuous year-round supply of organic food. This in turn enables them to eat themselves and feed their families sell to the village people at local prices and also to produce a small surplus to sell commercially to the tourist market. And all of this is done without degrading their environment or degrading their dignity or their integrity. As much as possible they source the materials and equipment used to set up a home farm in the Gambia itself. And all of the ongoing requirements are either produced within the gardens or bought locally which also supports other local traders. Self-reliance is one of their main objectives. Sandy does not give out any money, 
only the means to make it, and make it they do. They now have a deep cement lined well, a solar pump with a header tank, and several satellite tanks feeding the fully productive kitchen garden and market garden areas interspersed with fruit and nut trees. She has also supplied a horse and cart and a couple of sheep for breeding, a store and a wire fence surrounding sustainable live fencing to permanently keep out predators. The young men have called their home farm Bush Town and their last communication reported that they are up to capacity with their production of vegetables now and are waiting for the summer rains to come to increase their output even further. When the fruit and nut trees start to produce it will be even better. And they can add to this the increased output of their traditional staple summer cash crops of peanuts, maize, couscous and rice through using their new horse for ploughing and hoeing. It's good to know that even if the rains don't come or are late, these village people won't suffer because they have a system of growing food and are trained in a schedule of work that enables them to sustain themselves, whatever the conditions. And these young men have chosen to stay at home to work. Obviously they may wish to travel later when they've built up their business, but they'll always have their livelihood in their village and their community will have access to good, fresh, organic food. What better gift can you give to anyone? And you can give that gift yourself. First hand, direct, no big agencies, no corruption, no hidden extras. Sandy is living in the Gambia for most of the year and she administers the project herself. Every penny that comes in goes where it is needed. The Home Farm Project is a registered charity in the Gambia with a small dedicated group of volunteer helpers. Over here in the UK, we have called it Africa Organics for easier search on the internet and it has a small committee of supporters which they are always looking to increase. Sandy wants to expand the scheme to many other villages in Africa. She's calculated that £5,000 will provide all the eight elements needed to install a complete home farm in another village. Each new project stands alone. Can you raise £5,000 to fund a village home farm? What better could you do with £5,000? It could be your project. The village will donate the land. The home farm project will buy and install all the equipment and train the young village men to grow food organically and they will do the rest. You give the farm a name. Sandy will keep you regularly informed of the development and you can meet the young men and their families that you've helped via video footage. Please look at their website www.africaorganics.org for more information about what they are doing. Then fill out the form that came with this DVD and send her anything you can afford towards setting up the next home farm.